Welcome back to my campaign play along with Finn and Nathaniel. Last time we completed Dogs of War in Alexandria and reclaimed the Light of Pharos. And this time we're going to be doing quite a bit of traveling across the globe, really hitting up a few interludes and then finishing off with a scenario pretty far away from where we currently are. One quick note I want to make is that I realized in editing that when I was doing my experience points for Finn, I accidentally used one too many points, so I gave myself up to 17. We've really only earned 16 points, so I edited the deck a little bit to bring it back down to below 17, below 16, I guess. And otherwise, it's pretty much the same thing. I think I took out a trigger man or something like that. So with that said, let's hop back into the map. We are here in Alexandria. This has been our path so far, and I will continue to illustrate our path. We're going to want to head over in this direction today, because in order to unlock the scenario without a trace, there's a few different places we need to visit in a certain order. So I'm going to start working on that. So from Alexandria, we'll go down to Cairo, which doesn't take a time, and then down to Bombay, which does take a time. And... We have to immediately read the interlude for Epsilon for that, which is somewhere in the back of here. All right, uh, status report Epsilon. As you traverse the streets, you flinch at every shifting shadow and every passerby wearing red. You're definitely being followed, and you have no, no lack of enemies who might fit the bill. So then, for the remainder of the campaign, whenever we are setting up a scenario, we have to perform the following. Gather each of the enemies in the Red Coterie encounter set whose name matches those who you haven't seen the last of in your campaign log. Choose one at random and shuffle it into the encounter deck for this scenario. So basically, everybody who has a bone to pick with us, we will gather. And then at the start of each scenario, we will shuffle one of these guys into the encounter deck. So far, we've only got these two. Red Glove Man does not like us from London, and then the Claret Knight does not appreciate what we did in Alexandria. I'm going to keep these here and try to remember to shuffle one in at the start of each scenario. Oops. Let's not do that. All right, so we'll leave that there. Next, from here, we will travel over to Kathmandu and read 56V. I was informed that you can just type... Or is it 53? 53V. I was informed you can just type the numbers and it'll go to the right page, so thanks for that tip, Pax. Uh... So basically, I'm not going to read all of this, but in Kathmandu, we meet up with Aliki, and she offers us a strange whistle. We are going to accept what she's offering. So we extend our hand and obtain this whistle from her, and then she says something in a language that we don't recognize. And without a way to communicate, that's basically all that we could do here. So we get to record that we possess a mysterious whistle, and then we suffer either a mental or physical trauma as the shrill sound follows them wherever they go. Then we swap one Elder Thing for a uh, Tablet Token. So I actually don't know what the distribution is here. Okay, so we just take out an Elder Thing and add a Tablet. We have to mark a time for going to Kathmandu, and then we get to record that we have a Mysterious Whistle. And then we also need to suffer some traumas, so we'll just both take a Physical because that's the stat that we're stronger in, of course. And that's it for Kathmandu. Next, we'll travel up to Shanghai to meet up with Flint. So that'll be on page 32. So we meet up with Flint in some cafe, I think. And did we hide the truth from Taylor before? I don't remember. Uh, we did hide the truth, so he trusts us. So then we have the choice to either stay and help him with his investigation into somebody who may be part of the coterie, or we can you know, tell him to keep looking and then get in touch with us when he's done. Or we can tell him to forget his investigation entirely and come with us. So we're going to just have him continue to work solo. And eventually we will get a message from him that will allow us to return here to continue this plot line. So in the sixth spot from the current time, we need to put Epsilon. I don't know how you do that in Tabletop Simulator. First off, let me mark the travel time. Uh, and then one, two, three, four, five, six. So let's just write... Epsilon 18 should be right about here. Maybe I'll mark it like that so I don't remember, so I don't forget. And we have to remember that Flint is working alone. I should just move this up, right? Wouldn't that be smarter? 
Clint is working solo. And I think that's all we have to do here. So we may embark. Next, we're going to go down to Mono Kawari, which takes one time. We can't stop here because it's red and we haven't unlocked the ability to stop here yet. And then we will travel down to Sydney, 59 or uh, 49. Uh, we check how much time has passed. We are at, I think it should be 14 now. Let me make sure. One, two, three, four, five, six. So we've done one, two, three, four, five, six. Did I miss one? Oh, uh, was one of these a free connection or something? One, two, three, four, five. It's only five. Okay. So I think this is correct. Uh, I'll check again later. So we're below 20 time passed. So if the cell told the truth to Taylor, which we didn't do, we would go here. If we hit it, we go here. So we meet up with Agent Ari Quinn, and she talks to us a bit about strange things she's been looking into that have to do with the outsiders. But she doesn't trust us very much because we didn't tell the truth that we were also looking into these uh, beings earlier in London. So we record that she doesn't trust the cell. But either way, we do unlock the ability to travel back to London and go to 27H in order to meet up with her again. So London is at 27H, and we need to record that she does not trust the cell. And that's all we're doing here. Next, we will go ahead and take this little hidden back path to Buenos Aires. Go here, then here, which is a really useful trick, by the way, that shows up a lot in routes that want to do without a trace because you, you really need to get as many scenarios as you can. And this is you have to go to Sydney anyway for that, so you may as well just go around the back to Buenos Aires. And that will cause us to have to read another interlude. So let's go, I think it was on page like 66, maybe a little further than that, on page 69, good to know. And we read beta. You receive a coded missive for com from Commissioner Taylor herself. Agents, not long ago, a massive explosion occurred near, I have no idea how to say that, the Tunguska River in Siberia. It is classified as an impact event, but this is just a cover story. Our intel now indicates coterie involvement. I have reason to suspect this may be the site of one of their sanctums, perhaps even their primary safe house. You have clearance to investigate the site, but be prepared for anything. We have to add a cultist to the chaos bag, which is never good. We also... I've unlocked the ability to visit Tunguska, and this is where the final scenario is, so we probably are not going to be going there anytime soon. But from this point on, we could choose to end the campaign at any time by simply going to Tunguska. I'm not going to bother putting too much detail, so that's it for that. And now we get to read 16D. Sanguine Shadows. So we arrive in Buenos Aires, we meet up with an officer named uh, Bolivar, and we have the choice to either uh, agree to help him look for the girl in the, what is it, the girl in the carmine coat? We can either help him search for the girl in the carmine coat, or we can say that we'll investigate on our own, or we can insist that he tells us everything he knows. Uh, and I think that I will just go for the middle option where we give him a few hints, but not too much information. And we basically decide that we're going to try to capture the girl in the Carmine coat, and he will stay kind of on, on the side out of the way. So we're finally at a new scenario, quite a bit further away than where we were. We are now down here. But that is all the traveling I need to do in order to unlock without a trace in the near future. So making some progress towards that. Let's go ahead and play Sanguine Shadows. Let's see. Ah, I places the decoys and stuff here. Put this over here. So before I forget, I'm going to shuffle in one of these guys in Sneak Counter deck. I should do it face down so I don't know which I'm getting. And let's load in our decks. Is there still like, I remember there was some bug earlier. We'll see if that's a problem or not. Hopefully it's not. Oh no, some of the cards are black or are like uh, blocked out. That's not good. I'm going to pause for one second and see if I can figure that out. All right, it looks like it's just a current little bug in Tabletop Simulator that 
the team that does the mod, which is really great, of course, is currently working on. So what I'll do is it looks like most of the cards are okay. It's just some player cards. So I will just do my best to play with these blank cards because I basically know their effects. And I'm sorry uh, about any inconvenience caused by that. So what we're going to do is we need to remove one. I got to read the setup more carefully. Let's see. So build the agenda deck using these. Everyone starts in the middle. Uh, remove one of these at random from the game. So I'm going to the top one I'll remove. The Cabildo. Cabildo. Oh, is this black? Oh, that's going to be a problem. So uh, I'm going to have to think about this more. One second. All right, uh, I've managed to get an updated version of the mod that fixes these problems. So thanks to the SCED team, as always, for the hard work they do. And we'll continue doing our setup. Uh, so we removed one random location. Next, place one resource on each location in play other than the middle location. And these represent areas that Chica Roja is going to attempt to steal from. So we will place like this. Find La Chica Roja, put her on her concealed side, and resolve her concealed keyword. So we will take some decoys. We have her as well as five decoys, and we spread them as evenly as possible amongst locations with targets. Where does it mention that it goes on locations with targets? I mean, I'm sure it does. I just don't remember where it mentions it. Well, whatever. I know that it's supposed to be like this. All right. Uh, shuffle the following cards. And OK, so we should be ready to go. I don't think I added in the one of these guys yet because I had to remake it. So now I've added one of those. And we're ready to go. So I've got to choose which cards I want to set aside for Underworld Market. I wrote it down in somewhere so I wouldn't forget. So it looks like we're putting aside the Derringers as well as our gun. So what are we keeping? We're keeping smuggled goods, apparently. And keeping, I'll take that in the deck. Looks like it's I'll take that and smuggled goods are being kept. And then these are the 10 Underworld Market cards. Nathaniel doesn't have to worry about anything, so we can just get started. So let's take five cards for Finn. Hmm. Lucky cigarette case seems pretty great. Other than that, I'm not thrilled about these, so I think I'll just put them back. That's fine. I guess sneak by might be okay. To get some extra resources somewhere. Our hands visible. One, two, three, four, five. So this gets us, this fetches us boxing gloves. So we're definitely going to keep that. Hunter's armor, I think, is going to be really good in this scenario because there's a lot that you can get around basically by just having tons of extra health and sanity. Let's try like this. Seems like a pretty good hand to me. Nice to have Monster Slayer early to be able to handle any small enemies. Safeguard, Randall Cho, pretty good hand. So we can go ahead and get started. Let us read the act and agenda. So agenda 1A, where is she? La Chica Roja is stealing pieces divided up from an old art collection, which you believe are parts of an ancient key. At the start of the game, or after the agenda deck resets, set the amount of doom on this agenda to one per investigator, which should be two for us. After you explode the decoy, La Chica Roja attacks you. Hint, when this agenda advances, La Chica Roja will collect one of the pieces she seeks. So this scenario is a bit of a race, where we're trying to find her and stop her before she is before the agenda advances, basically. Next, Act 1A, the Scarlet Shadow. Thanks to Officer Bolivar, you believe you know which buildings might hold the pieces La Chica Roja is after. All that is left is to catch her in the act. Objective, expose the thief's whereabouts. If, this, if an investigator engages La Chica Roja, advance. So we're trying to find her. She's in one of these. But thanks to the effect on the agenda. If we ever expose a decoy, she gets a free hit on us. So we can't just go and expose them all willy-nilly. 
we start in the middle and the shroud is merely three but we can also resign from here if we want and there's a few clues to gather i believe we should be on the easy side the easy standard side i believe the cultists are horrible here minus five is pretty bad and then we have one each of the other ones so canceling skill cards or placing doom on chikaraha or letting her do more attacks to us so basically i think we have a little bit of time to get set up here we might not be able to catch her before she steals one target but we just need to beat her to three of the six we don't have to win all of them especially for the resolution i'm going for so let's start by having underworld market trigger start your turn reveal the top two cards you can pay resources for one of them um i don't think i really want either of these right away so i think i'll put these back on the bottom for now Yes, we picked up some trauma as well, so let's make sure to put those in. So, what do we want to do with Finn? I feel like I could grab some clues. I could just move around and explore a bit. Nathaniel is mostly going to be doing setup. Uh, I probably should have had Nathaniel go first so he could get safeguard out, but that's all right. Let's just let's draw a card. That's a pretty freaking good card. <laughs> let's play a card. I don't. Hmm, is there anything that can make me discard this right away? I don't remember exactly what's in the game. I think there is, so I'm going to put Cigarette Case first. And then we can Light a Pharos for Milan. Light a Pharos reduces the cost of a card by three, so he only costs us one resource. And that's my turn. Seems pretty good to me. For Nathaniel, we're going to put out Randall Cho and search for a Boxing Gloves. Where are my Boxing Gloves? They are. Uh, let's go ahead and trigger Twisted Antiprism so we can look at the top three cards and draw one as well. Clean them out seems nice. We're going to want economy eventually. We paid two for Randall Cho. Let's go ahead and put down our boxing gloves. And then last action. I might just take a resource because I really need to get all this stuff out. And there's nothing better for Nathaniel to be doing right now. So that's the first turn. We go to upkeep. Nice. Then we go to mythos. So we place doom. Draw encounters. Uh, either spend a clue or choose and discard half of the non-weakness cards in your hand rounded up. Well, nothing I can do about that. Just got to discard half of my cards. Uh, I'd like to keep the perception. Uh, sneak by is kind of nice, but I guess we have Milan, so we probably are okay for that. I'm going to do this, I think. So discard three cards. Not a great encounter, but not horrible. Attach to a location without a target and without a copy of calling card attached. While it's in play, clues cannot be spent at any location. After you successfully investigate attached location by two or more, discard calling card, look at the revealed side of a concealed mini card at any location without exposing it. So we can't spend clues, but if we manage to investigate this location by two or more, we get to peek at one of the concealed mini cards, which is really great. So it's kind of a not too bad of an encounter. The next, oh, I shouldn't have shuffled that because these. Some of them are supposed to be on the bottom. Put these back on the bottom. I'm just so used to shuffling decks. All right, the top two would be lockpicks and disguise. I definitely wanted lockpicks, so we'll pay one resource for that. Then we'll put the rest beneath. I'm totally cheating, right? Because this is supposed to be on the very bottom. All right, sorry about that. I haven't played this card too much. So we'll do that. Uh, I think we kind of just want to take a money, play the lockpicks, and then investigate and try to clear this calling card. And I might be able to get some extra money and some cards from that, so it seems pretty good. So let's do that. Let's take an investigation. Oh, interesting. They changed the tokens. Pretty cool. Uh, I don't have to use any. It's lockpicks. Four. So I'm basically I'm a nine, right? So I'm a nine versus three. No need to use perception here. Let's just give that a try. 9 verse 3. Minus 1. Good thing I didn't commit that perception. It would have been cancelled. So I was 9 verse 3. Basically I ended up being 8 verse 3. So I get a clue. I passed by 2 or more. So we'll take one of these. Trigger Milan. And I did pass by 2 or more. So I can discard this calling card in order to peek at a concealed mini card. Let's just take a look at this one. So this is not one we want to go expose. So now I know that there's no reason for me to go down there. At least not on this uh, this round of the game. Next, Nathaniel. Uh, it's pretty boring, but I really might just take money and put out my safeguard and hunter's armor. 
I guess I can't get both of them, but I definitely want the safeguard this turn because I'm going to move soon. I really might just take money money. I think it might be the way to go because I want to get this hunter's armor really quick to be able to soak a bunch of damage and horror. There's no enemies yet, so I don't think I, ha I really feel the need to do anything else. I probably could have triggered this and just put it on the calling card because Finn would have discarded it, but oh well, I wasn't watching too closely. Go to upkeep. Another boxing gloves. Too bad we don't have bandolier, right? So let's check what we've got here. Uh, each enemy in the shadows attacks you, or each investigator loses an action. Hmm. So I don't really think I want to lose the action, but taking damage and horror is not great. We'll do it this time, but hopefully we don't have to do it too much more. Test three. For each point you fail, my you must either take one horror or place one of your clues on your location. This could be a lot of horror. We're definitely going to commit this courage to it. We're up by two on that. I think that's going to have to be good enough. All right, so we take one horror. That's not bad. We can put it on Randall. And overall, not too horrible. So now it's our turn again. Finn could grab a clue here um, and then move down. Let's check our underworld market first. Got a Derringer and Embezzled Treasure. I think I'm not quite far enough in the game to need Embezzled Treasure or the Derringer, so I'm just going to put these back. Maybe it's worth grabbing the Derringer, Derringer to my hand to be able to play a weapon sooner or later. But I think I'll just wait on it for now. I want to get my Damning Testimony eventually, so I'll wait and save up for that. Let's go ahead and try to grab this clue with lockpicks. Too bad I don't get multiple clues, right? But I get the one. We can trigger Milan for a money and trigger a cigarette case for a card. Let's move on down to Palacio. I am not Spanish. Irazuriz. Uh so we get to expose the or uh reveal that. Nathaniel can move down with us. As an action, you can spend a clue, test combat four to break into the mansion. You may spend one additional clue to reduce the difficulty of this test by two. If you succeed, look at the revealed side of a concealed mini card at this location without exposing it. For every two points you succeed by, look at an additional mini card at this location. So Finn could try this, right? He could do this test. It's a real shame Nathaniel doesn't have a way to get clues very easily because he could do this test so much easier, but you have to spend one of your clues. You can't spend one of your teammates' clues, which is kind of lame. Maybe we could use Eye of Ravens to let Nathaniel grab a clue so he could do this. Definitely some options. Uh, I could give it a shot, but I'm I'm basically going to have to use my Lucky on it. It doesn't really seem that good, so I think I'll just investigate. I'm up by three, so I mean, that should be good enough. It's not good enough. Uh, so, I re so I just shuffle these cards randomly and replace them. doesn't change anything, because I didn't know anything about them anyway. Now for Nathaniel's turn. Let's get out this Hunter's Armor. Maybe we'll try to take a clue using Eye of Ravens. I could see that being decent, so we'll give it a shot. Nice. And then maybe Nathaniel can do the test. We commit boxing gloves. We would be five, six, seven, seven verse four. I'm gonna try it. Yes, I could draw the minus five, but I'm just hoping it doesn't happen. Cool. So we know this one's no good. So we've looked at two. We're probably not going to get to look at all of them, so we might not find her on the first try, and that's okay if it happens. But I thought I may as well give it a shot. So let me go to our upkeep. Go to Mythos. What do we got? Another calling card. Can't spend clues anywhere again. Finn could clear this probably, but not great. Undercover. Uh, place a decoy at the location with the most concealed mini cards, flip it face down, and shuffle each concealed mini card at that location. I'm going to pick this location, because we know that it's already nothing nothing there. We know these are both decoys, so there's nothing to worry about. I guess I was supposed to do this test first, so let's test uh, our agility, I guess. Okay, we would have failed, so then we place this in there. All right, so hmm, how much do we want to find her? Because if we really want to i could probably do it right nathaniel could like walk up here and maybe take a shot at this and hope it's her Finn could pull back and calling card and take a peek at another spot i think we're gonna go up here does nathaniel want to come with us 
Why not? Let's go ahead and twist an anti-prism in order to mark this with a doom. Pretty sure you can use twisted anti-prism even when it's not your turn, right? Check the book on keys. During any player window. Yep. So we can shift that. Mark that it's been shifted. Then let's go ahead and take an investigation here with perception. Nice. I think I needed that perception, right? Because I was 9, and I'm 11 versus 3. 11 minus 5 gives us... 6, 6 versus 3, so I pass by more than 2. I get a card for Perception, card for Cigarette Case, a Money for Milan. I didn't even check this, but we'll just say I didn't do it this turn. It's all right. And then we discard this card. We get to peek at one of these. This is also not her. So it's one of these three. Uh, how much do I really want it? Because I can move up to here or something like that and try to do it in free evade. If I fail, she gets to hit me. Or sorry, if I if it's a decoy, she gets to hit me, which I don't love, but might be worth it anyway. Let's try. Spend X clues and take X whore. Look at their real side of X concealed mini cards this location. Let's do a free action evasion. We can commit nimble maybe. And then that way if there's nothing here, we can move back. So we would be five versus two. Okay. We expose this. It's a decoy. So she gets to hit us for one damage and one horror. And I get two moves out of that. So I'm just going to move move to here. I'm getting a little unlucky with these. I've looked at four and I haven't found her yet, but that's okay. I'm going to need to... I need to be more worried about this, I think, because I don't have that much healing in my deck. I just shuffled it again. I can't believe I just innately do this. I can't help myself. This is on the bottom. This was somewhere around there. Uh, this was down there too. I think both derringers were down there, so I'm pretty sure it's just like this. I gotta not do that anymore. Some over here. This is uh, spend a clue. That's agility four. The Finn could do that next turn, maybe if he wanted. Right. Either way, it's Nathaniel's turn now. So let's duck over to here. Spend a clue, test intellect four. I think we're just going to take a punch on this concealed card. And hopefully it's her. So we are five, six, seven, seven verse four. Wow, we, it's literally, la literally the last one. Not, not fantastic on the luck at all. So we get hit again. And we're definitely going to get her next. We just have to expose this card and we're basically good. So then we go to our upkeep. Trigger man. He can soak a little bit, right? Do I have a Charisma? I do. That's good. We could put Trigger Man out and with Damning Testimony, maybe, if we draw that. Go to Mythos. Please don't advance the Doom. Locked door. So that would lock this. Catamouse. There's a concealed mini card at your location. You may expose it. Uh, if the enemy's, if an enemy's mini card be exposed by this effect, instead flip back over and shuffle it face down with the concealed mini cards at your location. I mean, sure, we know it's her, so we flip it, but then it just gets, just gets reshuffled anyway. Uh, best intellect four, if you fail, you must decide. Either place a doom on the current agenda, or the nearest coterie enemy attacks you. Well, we're just gonna, we're just gonna fail this, and she'll get to hit us, and that's alright. Yep, so we take an attack. Put one here, and one here. And it's a good thing we have this hunter's armor. I guess it should be technically taking up these main slots. So all we gotta do is expose this and beat her up, right? It should be should be possible. Um, let's have Nathaniel go on ahead and try to do that. Does Finn have anything he can use to help this combat test? I guess we could expose with kicking the hornet's nest, but we're gonna have to pull an enemy with that. Which I don't know if I really want to do. Hmm, it's kind of tricky. Finn could go and try to do the expose. Of course, it's at a, a five shroud location. It's pretty tough. I guess we're up by two. We could take a few tries. Let's go ahead and anti prism first. Let's see if there's anything helpful here. Hmm, not amazing, I think. We 
we could commit some of our cards. Maybe we don't need both get over here. We could like do a clean them out. Maybe we'll keep cleaning them out. Maybe we'll just do commit get over here. We're up by three. That should be okay. Nice. So we flip this, we expose her, and we advance the agenda. Following all of your leads, you manage to beat La Chica Roja to her target and lie in ambush. She arrives soon after and sets to work, but it's not long before she realizes something is wrong. She hums a jazzy improvision and saunters around the room, scanning for something. Coming out, she says at last, a smirk on her lips. You reveal yourself and tell her to stop what she is doing. Or what, she grins. You gonna make me? Alright, so she engages us. And we're on Act 2A in the searchlight. You finally have her in your sights. La Chica Roja gains parlay. Test intellect or agility 6 to outsmart the thief. You may spend one clue to reduce this test difficulty by 2. If you fail, La Chica Roja attacks you. Objective if she would be defeated, instead advance. Or objective if an investigator parlays with her, advance. So I am just going to beat her using Nathaniel, of course. Let's go ahead and take an attack. We'll use clean them out to gain some money. So we're five, six, seven. Basically, we're up by four. Do I maybe want to spend one icon here in order to guarantee it? I'm not going to need this, right? Let's go up by five. Nice. So she takes two damage, one for cleaning them out and one for Nath Nathaniel's ability. This doesn't count as defeating her because it's when she would be defeated, instead be instead advanced. So we can't trigger boxing gloves, but we do get to advance. We've used our ability. Find the location with a target on it near to La Chica Roja. Place that target on the scenario reference card. We have claimed one of the three targets we need. Um, then if there are three targets on the scenario reference card, skip the rest of this act and instead proceed to scenario interlude, cast a light. Otherwise, continue reading the following. Fine, you can have this one, the mysterious thief calls to you as she makes her escape. There's more where that came from anyway. Before you can catch her, with a twirl of her stark red coat, she vanishes into the shadows without a trace. Heal all damage from La Chica Roja, return her to the shadows, resolve her concealed keyword, distributing each of those concealed mini cards as evenly as possible among each location with a target. Reset the act and agenda decks to agenda 1 and act 1. Each investigator loses each of his or her clues. Add clues to each location till it has clues equal to its clue value. Oh, I don't remember losing my clues, but that's not ideal. We do get to restore the clues, so we get two more here. One here, I didn't take any anywhere else. He goes back to the shadows and we resolve her concealed keyword. I guess uh, these other ones would have been cleared because we exposed the only enemy in the shadows. So they all got wiped out. So, what is this? So, we take these five and we distribute them among locations with a target. One. I'm going to put... Which, which of these are easy, right? <laughs> uh, we, go, we definitely put one on each of these and then I get to put two on one of them. So, I get to pick one that I think I'd be good at doing. I feel like this one's one of the easier ones, right? Testing uh, intellect shouldn't be that bad for Finn. So let's put the extra one. I didn't even shuffle her in, so this is useless. But we'll put two at Asa Rosada. Put two here, one everywhere else. And we will continue. When we reset this, we reset this as well. And we just continue playing the game. He is back in the shadows. That's one of the three we need, so we're doing pretty good here. Uh, I think for my last action, I might just draw a card. If I draw Tommy Malloy, it kind of sucks, but hopefully we don't draw Tommy Malloy. All right, cool. Nice. Uh, and then Finn's turn. Let's do our Underworld Market properly this time. I'm going to take Damning Testimony. It might not be amazing in this scenario because I don't think there's that many enemies around, but I'm still going to take it just in case it ends up being better than I think. This goes on the bottom. we got to spend one money for that. So we want to grab some clues. I guess we want to go over here and grab these clues and then try to do this, this intellect test. So I'm going to have Finn move over to here and Nathaniel can safeguard hit over as well. We could play Trigger Man and just put out the damning testimony. Some extra soak as well, so I think it's reasonable. We could kick the hornet's nest for an enemy, but I don't think we really want one right away. Let's just put out Trigger Man. Trigger Man, when he enters play, attach an illicit asset from your hand to Trigger Man. Uh, exhaust him and spend a resource, resolve an ability on the attached asset without paying its cost, resolve that ability with a base skill of 4. So we get to put this in play without paying for it, basically. And it's attached to him, so I'll leave him kind of nearby. 
be costed four money to play. My last action, let's just go ahead and take an investigate with our lock picks. Interesting. These evidence tokens are neat looking. So we are nine versus four. Minus one, that's a pass. We get a clue, we get a money for Milan, we get a card for cigarette case. We could do a free agility action to try to expose one of these, but I'd rather not take the damage and horror, so let's just call it good. So then we go to our upkeep. Kind of hoping to draw the other hunter's armor. I didn't even know this was in here, but that seems pretty great. Lots of extra soak to help protect us from all the damage we get. Ah, the Claire at night. Um, spawn location farthest from you. Each other coterie enemy gets plus two fight. When he is discarded from play, he shifts each of his attached keys. Or when another coterie is discarded from play, yeah, he shifts each of his keys. I'm thinking we could just dump him over here. Because then we can damning testimony. He doesn't hunt or anything. We can just damning testimony, scoop up all these clues, and hopefully La Chica Roja is not over here. But we could actually expose from afar, right? Using, using damning testimony in order to expose. I think... Uh, Discover one additional clue. So I think if you do this, it takes up all of the... I want to say it takes up all of the clues you would get. You would discover one there. Here is the rule book. Concealed. It always has its uh, trickiness, doesn't it? Yeah, so I think I could remote investigate, not get any clues at all, but expose this. Definitely worth considering. Can't be investigated. Oh, so I guess locked door like blocks this. Oh no, you only investigate your location, but you discover a clue at the other location. So this works really nice, actually. Anyway, there are no enemy in the shadow. It gains surge. Otherwise, test if you fail. Place a decoy here. Okay, so we're gonna fail this. We failed it. So we just basically we add an extra decoy here, and then we shuffle them up twice. So I could pass this test by a lot. I'd be able to look at all these decoys. So there might be some idea to try to do calculator risk here and pass this test by a lot. Five, I could get to like eight. Eight versus two if I had two clues. So we might not be able to look at all of them, but we might look at a good number. Definitely something to consider. I think Finn goes first in any case. I think we'll go ahead and do our underworld market. Do we want to grab this? Seems like it's nice to have overall, so I'll take it. And put these on the bottom. I guess we could I have Ravens. I never shift this back because I don't like drawing the encounter cards, but I definitely could. Maybe not right away though. Let's go ahead and lock picks one. Okay, money from Milan, a card. Two calculator risks. We can't play both on the same test, right? One committed, one committed per test, so no. Get a clue. I need to burn an action, and then I could try this test and commit a whole bunch to it. So what I want to do, I could do the remote expose over here. I probably should have done that instead of lock picks, but it's all right. We'll be fine either way. I could... Yeah, do I want to just do that expose trick? Because I could investigate here and try to just grab one of these. I forget, does resolving in a, an ability like this count as taking an action? Might be something to, to ask about later for the calculated risk combo. Let's go ahead and put out this leather coat, leather jacket. It's fast, doesn't cost anything. I'm going to go ahead and do this remote expose just in case it's her. It's pretty good if it is. So we'll I'll spend an action on it because I don't really need to do this. But I guess it's pretty efficient, isn't it? Fine. We'll do that. So we are four, five, six, seven. Seven versus four. Yep. So we would spend one evidence to discover a clue at this location and we would expose with it. Okay, so it's not her, so we just take a damage and a horror for that. But it was good to check. I've got some extra action still, so I'm going to take one money, I think. Then we will try to do this intellect test. We'll spend two clues, so we're testing against a four. We are a base five. If 
we use this, we'll be get plus three. So it should be eight versus two. I'm not going to use this this game. Nine versus two. The intellect over here we don't need. Hmm. I really want to get this. Let's try ten versus two. Nice. So we passed by six. So we probably didn't need to pass by that much, but we get to look at all three of these cards. And there she is. Look at the revealed side of Concealed Mini card without exposing it. So we know these two are no good, and we know this is her. I mean, I could just expose her right now and just kill her again with Nathaniel. I don't know if there's any reason I'd want to draw it out more than that. I'm so far ahead on the Doom that I could just stall for a while and play cards, but it might reshuffle these, and that would be really annoying. I think I do want to at least expose her this turn. Good. Play Greet, expose her, and then Monster Slayer her or something like that? Uh, I guess if I play Greet, it kills Randall, or it discards Randall. So maybe we'll just take, I think we'll take a punch to try to expose her, and then if it works, we'll try to Monster Slayer her. If it doesn't work, we can still counter punch and stuff like that. So it should be good. Let's try to fight. We're up by three. Okay. We expose La Chica Roja. All the other cards get discarded. Once again, you beat your rival to the punch, and she spots you immediately. You again, she says dismissively. Don't you have anything better to do? I'm quite busy, as you can see. She engages us, and we simply need to... Oops. Simply need to defeat her again. So let's go ahead and try to do that. Up by, let's see, this is seven, we're up by four. Okay, she's defeated. So we take this target for our own, and then we redo everything. So we refresh the clues, everyone loses all their clues, no one has any. We would replenish the clues here. Then we would take our mini card as well as five decoys one two three four five and distribute them amongst locations with the target one two three four as evenly as possible so i think i want to put one here it's low shroud this spot is not that bad but i don't really like the locked door i guess it's pretty easy to look at these without exposing them because we can spend two clues take two horror hmm We'd have to deal with the Claire at night if we actually want to do that, though, so probably not. Let's just put it over here. And then we're ready to go again. I think we can just move to the middle. That could be the end of that turn. Uh, I meant to use this on her, but it's okay. We don't really need it. Let me go to upkeep. Go to mythos. This reset down to two because of the... Flip of the, uh, because we complete the act resets. So now it's up at three again. Nearest location with a concealed mini card and no coterie envoy. While it's ready at its location, uh, it's concealed at its location cannot be exposed after you defeat it. Look at the revealed side of any concealed in play. I'm thinking maybe we put it here because we can do remote investigations here. I guess we can already do that with Claire at night, so it's not that big of a deal. But I'll put it here, and Nathaniel can walk down and kill it, perhaps. Attach to an enemy in the shadows without a copy of In Plain Sight attached. After you expose attached enemy, the enemy attacks you and gets plus two fight until the end of the round. Discard In Plain Sight. Basically, it's going to be a little harder to fight her the last time. But we'll handle it, I'm sure. So I think for Finn, I kind of want to just scoop up a few clues. I wonder if we have enough health and sanity. I feel like we do. Nathaniel does have enough health sanity. He could just go and start exposing stuff willy-nilly and try to get lucky and find her. We might not have to really play the game too much. I think I would like to do some investigating, though. Let's try to grab a clue from the Claret Knight's location. Maybe we do just expose this again, just to see. Can we take it? I think we could take it. Let's do this trick again. Let's look at these first. I think this is a good one to have, just in case, so we'll take it. 
Let's spend a money to trigger trigger man to do damning testimony over here. So we are up by three. Because we are seven. Okay, we can trigger these. And we will discover we will just expose this. That's a decoy, so we know we don't have to go there at all. We take a damage and a horror. We can discard our leather coat. I guess we'll keep the leather coat just in case. We'll put the damage on trigger man instead is slightly better. It's exhausted. Just checking those. Um, all right. So what we can do is we want to move down here. We can snag a clue from here. They're just good to have, right? Yep, take a clue. I feel like I'm going to need to start peeking at this spot. This spot seems like a problem spot, right? So let's go over to here. Spend X clues and thrice as many resources. Look at the revealed side of X concealed mini cards this location. So if we had six money, we could peek out a lot of cards. Could work out, I think. Right, and then Nathaniel's turn. Let's go ahead and get over here on this guy. Let's pull him over. He engages us as well. Move the enemy to your location, engage it, and attack it. Uh, so then we get to the point where we can commit skill cards. I'll fast trigger this during that point to put a doom on him. And we'll commit Vicious Blow. Five, six, seven, eight. Eight first two. Okay, so he takes three damage. One for this, one for that, and one for this. And he's defeated. That lets us peek at a card, so we know this is no good. Then we can go ahead and trigger Boxing Gloves to search the top nine cards for a Spirit event. Two, three. Let's either stand together, clean them out, or one, two, punch. Stand together could help, could help Finn get the money he needs for his thing, so that seems like a good one to me. I probably should have played Greet before doing this to take the free clue, but that's all right. It'll be okay either way. So it's either going to be here or here. I could just walk down there and start punching these. I think that's okay to me. So I'm going to walk down here, and let's play Greet. I've been, I've been waiting to play Greet because of Randall. Maybe I just expose one of these and then let it kill if it if it's... Not La Chica Roja, it'll attack and kill Randall, and then we can play Greet next turn. Let's just try and expose. I think we're good, right? Because we were 7 versus 2. So this is a decoy, so Randall gets defeated. And we do expose that. So now there's only these three left. Should be pretty easy to finish from here, I think. So we go to upkeep. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. Let's ditch the I'll take that. Let's go to Mythos. What do we have? Cat and Mouse. You may expose. I will. La Chica Roja. So we know she's here. So she's one of these two. Ooh. Um, test your willpower. Let's commit what we have. That gets us to even. Then we can lucky a little bit. Let's go up by one. Minus five. Yikes. Uh, so we are basically zero versus three. We are four. So we're negative one versus three. We can play this. Sorry, I'm bad at math. Let me think about this again. So I was a four. Yeah, four versus three. Negative one versus three. This gets me to one versus three. So I still fail by a lot. I'm gonna have to make extra concealed cards. I may as well just may as well just take it. Let's drop a clue and take two horror. We can play this next turn and start healing a little bit of it. Not great. Found Night Gaunt. Lucky of us to draw this on Nathaniel, honestly. Um, all right, so I guess we can just go. I guess I would like to find embezzled treasure in order to start accruing money. So let's check these two. Take one. I do need money, though, really badly. 
How scared am I of getting killed? Because I could just not play Liquid Courage. I could get Embezzled Treasure and Lock Picks and then Liquid Courage my last action, but not actually trigger it this turn. I'm not really scared of dying because I could always put damage and horror on these guys. I'd rather not, but I could. Let's put out the treasure. Let's investigate with lock picks. We could investigate with damning testimony for two clues. Seems a little better, I think. Let's do that. Choose this location. We're not going to use trigger man's ability because I want to save money. So I'm just four, five, six, seven. Seven versus three. Cool. So I get a clue from my location and a clue from that location. Trigger Milan, trigger cigarette case. Ah, oh well. If I take one money here on my... Is that my last action? I could still play this, but I wasn't going to. I'm going to take a money here, and that way in upkeep when I get a money, I can put two of it on a bezel treasure. We're not going to get all the money on a bezel treasure, I think, just because of the doom, but it'll be fine. For Nathaniel's turn, Mono and Mono just kills this, so we may as well do that. Figure that, check the top nine. I'd like another Mono and Mono, I think. Let's just move twice to get all the way over here. That's the end of the turn. So let me go to upkeep. We go to Mythos. It is a little tight, actually. I know there's Night Gaunts in here and stuff, too. That's Agility 4. If you fail, take a damage and a horror and move to a central location. Would probably rather pass. So let's just make it guaranteed. This is definitely enough for everything but auto fail. Okay, we pass. We could take some free moves, but I don't really want to. So I'll just take a card for manual decks and not take any damage horror. I was 7 versus 4 minus 2, so I didn't pass by 2 or more. Hunting Nikon. I knew they'd show up eventually. Big boys. Hmm. So what do we need to do? We need a bit of money, that's for sure. Kill this, that's for sure. Basically of this turn and next turn. I guess Nathaniel can actually just fight his way through everything. He could do all the exposes and stuff. He just needs the actions to do it in. How much money does Finn have? Not enough. This guy's uh, annoying. We can mono a mono most of him and do a basic attack, maybe? I kind of, if I save mono a mono, I could use it on La Chica Roja to make it almost guaranteed to kill her. So that might be better. So what could I do on this guy? I don't have that many fight events, right? So I guess I really don't have a choice but the mono a mono. Let's just do that. Take a basic attack on him. It'll be fine. Five versus five, six, seven. Seven verse three. Get one of these. Eight verse three. Nice. He's dead. We can trigger this. One, two, punch. Monster Slayer. Lots of good stuff. Let's take a uh, one, two, punch. We have a lot of money and it's a powerful event here. Let's just try to do an expose, I think. Up by four. Trigger anti-prism, I guess. May as well look for something more useful. Sure, why not? We're up by four. We're not going to need this. We can go up by five. Eight verse three. Cool. Okay, so we know the last one is definitely her. Take one and one for that. So Finn could expose, but she would probably start messing him up. So that's not perfect. Uh, after you expose attached enemy, it attacks you and gets plus two fight totally on the ground. We could expose it and have it engage Nathaniel, though. Finn would still take the hit. Definitely want to do this, that's for sure. We could probably get at least a little bit of money here. I'm going to take a money, and I'm going to do the expose. And I'm just going to think that I'm not going to die. My vote. Let's do that. Let's expose her. Okay, so 9 versus 3, 9 minus 5. So we do get a money from Milan still. We expose her. She hits us for 1 and 1. And then she gets plus 2 till the end of the round. We'll have her engage Nathaniel when she's exposed. 
And we'll put this here for now. All the other decoys go away. And Finn has one action left. I don't know what this is doing here. I've lost track of my deck. I didn't even check it this time. Uh, if Finn, now nah, there's no reason for Finn to try to punch her or anything. I think we'll just take another money. Not going to matter, but may as well have it. So then she gets an attack, so we can go like that. This goes away, and we go to upkeep. Go to Mythos. Uh, there's no one in the shadows, so it surges. No one in the shadows, so it surges. I got. Doesn't matter, we're not going to have to fight it. On Wings of Darkness. So we're going to get pulled away, huh? It's a little annoying, potentially. Yeah. Okay, so we get pulled back to the middle. She will disengage, and then she'll engage here instead. Aye, aye, aye. Uh, and we'll take one and one. Nathaniel just needs to walk over and kill her. But I guess I worry a little bit about accidentally hitting Finn. I don't think I should worry that much, though. I'd have to, like, double autofail to actually lose the game from this point, right? So let's just go do it. Uh, let's trigger this on Finn's turn. Just load this up as much as we can. If that attack was canceled. Interesting. So I think I want to take one attack, and then if I fail, I would just engage, and then counterpunch I can use twice in the enemy phase to have two more tries at it. Let's one-two punch. Five, six, seven, eight. Eight versus three. Everything but autofail. All right, she takes two damage for that. She's defeated. Uh... We claim this target, and we go to the scenario interlude, shed a light, cast a light. La Chica Roja paces around you in a slow circle as you claim her prize. You're good, she concedes with a playful smirk. But you're working for the wrong people. You know that, right? You tell her to stand down and turn herself over for questioning. She steps into the shadows, obscuring her face, but you can tell from her tone that she hasn't stopped smiling. There are no targets. Go to cast a light too. You prepare for a lengthy chase, ready to take her down at any cost, but to your surprise, she reaches out and flicks a lamp switch next to her, bathing the room in an orange glow. She stands exposed in the lamplight, for once not fleeing or ducking into the shadows. Let's talk, Gumshoe. You're not with the police, you insist. I suppose that much is obvious. I don't see that fool Bolivar anywhere. But if that's truly the case, then who do you work for, she asks. You know what? Never mind that. You seem to know who I work for, don't you? Well then, surely you must know there are two of us operating in Buenos Aires. Why aren't you after the other guy? Your confusion must show on your face. After a beat, La Chica Roja grins. Oh, so that's how it is. You, my friend, have outdated information. You ask if she is using the stolen art pieces to assemble a key, as the Foundation's intel suggested. Key? Oh, I see. You call them keys. Well, yes, that much is true. But you're missing the why. The girl in the carmine coat paces throughout the room, stepping in and out of countless shadows. The other guy. The Sanguine Watcher, they call him. Nobody knows his real name. She takes off her hat and runs her finger along its scarlet hat, hat band before using it to mask her countenance. Just like me, I suppose. Nameless, faceless. Then she rolls it back onto her head with a chuckle. Only El Observador Sangu Sanguanarino isn't like me. He's, he's already got his hands on more than a few pieces. Even with just those, he'll use them out of cruelty and malice. Human experimentation. Spellcraft. Real creepy stuff. He gets the most of them. He gets the rest of them. Who knows what he'll do with them. My associates tend to thrive on that kind of thing. But not me. Her fierce brown eyes lock with yours, soft and steely all at once. I came here to stop him. And we decide either I believe you or I'm sorry, but I cannot believe you. If we say I believe you, we basically go to an extended part of the scenario, which I do not want to do because it takes extra time, not just physical time, but time in terms of the Scarlet Keys campaign log. And I need all the time I can get to play all 10 scenarios. So I'm going to go straight to Castle Light 4. You tell La Chica Roja that she spins an intriguing tale, but you still cannot trust her. She lets out a sigh, grins, and flicks the nearby lamp switch again, filling the room once more with darkness. Then I guess I'll see you around. Idiota, R1. Pretty good. Wiped out everything. I actually was not expecting to get a perfect clear of this, but I guess it wasn't as bad as I thought it would be. Got a little lucky on the second rotation, but the first rotation was pretty tight. Either way, a pretty good result. You rush to apprehend your quarry, but with a twirl of shadows, she has vanished. It is as if she was a trick of the light all along. 
the same kind of mischief mirrored in official Bolivar's reports. Thankfully, you now possess enough of what she was after to put it together yourself. It takes some time and research, but eventually you're able to slot the various pieces of what you originally assumed to be art together. To your surprise, the result is, or is an ornate figurine of a woman in robes. Tears, carved as thin lines like bloody scars, trail down the figure's cheeks. With your new prize in tow, you report back to office official Boulevard the next day. He is more than a little miffed that his enemy escaped his grasp, but relieved that her campaign of thievery is finally at an end. I warned you she would get away, he says between sips of his espresso. As far as my superiors are concerned, the book is closed on this one. It won't look good on my record, but as long as she's fled the city like you say, I am content with that. You thank him again for his help and prepare to leave Buenos Aires behind. So we get victory for each uh, card in the victory display, and we get one bonus experience for each target that was on the scenario reference card when the scenario ended. I think there's literally nothing in the victory display, right? So technically, the way the rules are written, she does not go to the victory display when you defeat her, but I believe it's a, an oversight personally, so I'm going to give myself this one point. And then we get three points for these targets, so it's a total of four experience. We mark one time in our campaign log. We record we haven't seen the last of La Chica Roja. Which means she will now show up as one of our potential enemies in the setups. So we will bring her over here with the other ones. Rotary Knight, or the uh, Claret Knight, did not end up being a big deal at all. We get three extra experience. We get four each, basically. Finn had one extra from before. And we claim the Weeping Lady key. I'm going to give this one to Nathaniel. I like spreading out my keys in general. So the Weeping Lady, decent one. Discover one clue at your location or a connecting location. Flip this key to its unstable side. And then to flip it back, you must each discard an asset you control if able, which is uh, probably not going to happen. But at least it's a free clue, basically. Let's go ahead and clear everything out. And then we will go ahead and do our upgrades with our measly 4xp. It was a little tight at times, but in the end, not too bad. Finn's health was a little closer than I wanted it to be. I probably missed a few chances to put things on Hunter's armor, but I wasn't really too worried. I still had allies like that could soak for me. I was never in range of actually dying to the encounter deck. I was being pretty aggressive with my exposing in order to try to find her within three rotations. Definitely could have taken it a little slower and gathered a few more clues. All right, let us go do some upgrades. So we've got 5xp to work with on Finn and 4 to work on with Nathaniel. I haven't really thought too much about what I want to get. What do I have in the uh, side deck? I think I'll take these out of the side deck. I think I was considering grabbing Armor of Thorns because I was worried that we might actually run out of fighting events and that's a way that we can basically get a little more fighting in there. So I could just do that. We could do some upgrades, get these get over here's or counter punches upgraded. We could take one physical training. Do I really need it? I don't really know about that. Um, I guess it wouldn't hurt. I think it's a pretty good card. It's too bad we can't upgrade stand together. I would really love to do that, but it's not in the play along campaign pool. I haven't really tried this too much, so I'm going to go ahead and just go for Armor of Thorns and keep one experience. We will just keep one. I think that should be pretty good. Hunter's Armor is basically done, right? Is there anything else on it? Oh, it doesn't take an arcane slot. Whoops, I put it in the wrong slot, but that's all right. No big deal. As for Finn, got five points to spend. I think I want the second trigger, man. It's not like it, it did anything amazing, but I do think it's a, a solid card. Um, I think I want to get the extra evidence here sooner or later as well. I'd like to try Surveil someday too. Maybe the Derringer upgrade though. Maybe we really just need to get a few small guns in there. It seemed like Nathaniel didn't have too much trouble handling everything, but it might be an issue later. Let's definitely go ahead and get the Trigger Man though, because that's kind of something I just want to try out. We're going to have to get rid of something for that. I don't think Nimble's that crazy. It's just good, but it's not amazing. So we could cut out Nimble. But I don't play with it that much, so it's nice to give it a, a fair try. 
Maybe I'll take that. Trigger Man kind of covers that a little bit, I guess. What are the upgrades on Honed Instincts? Hmm. I don't know if I'll ever get around to upgrading this. If I do, I might just do the boring stuff, Impulse Control and Force of Habit, and just make it into lots of extra actions. We have two experience left. Let's just get one upgraded Derringer because it's a really good card. And I think I'm going to need to do it eventually. Then we have to trim off something. I haven't really used Kicking the Hornet's Nest that much just because I'm scared of spawning extra enemies. But I do think it's still a good card. So is I'll take that and so is Sneak By. I do worry a little bit about my economy because I feel like if I don't draw Dr. Milan early, this deck probably does kind of have money issues. Embezzled Treasure helps a little bit. Let me note that Embezzled Treasure is worth two. Embezzled Treasure helps some. I guess we have Light of Pharaoh, so it's not as bad as I think. Maybe one sneak attack. Kind of expensive for what it is. Let's just do like that, I think. And that's it. So another successful scenario. Grabbed another key and did a lot of the traveling we need to do for the without a trace unlock next time i think we're gonna have a bit more of a difficult scenario i was anticipating this one being a bit challenging though it turned out not to be as bad as i thought it would and i really kind of crushed it but i think that just goes to show how good these these characters are Finn is really always quite strong nathaniel very strong even with a limited card pool they do really well in any case next time we will take our travel ticket somewhere new and jump somewhere Cross the map and continue working on the scenarios. I think we've done four so far Riddles in Rain, Dealings in the Dark, Dogs of War, Sanguine Shadow. So we're four scenarios through, six more to go, and hopefully everything continues to go just as well. Thanks for tuning in, and I will see you next time.